Good morning, church. Uh, great to see you. Happy, happy Pentecost uh, to all of you. It's a, it's a beautiful, wonderful celebration. Hallelujah. And uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters today celebrate Shavuot. Uh, it's a Hebrew way of saying Pentecost. But Pe Pentecost, obviously, it's uh, Greek, it comes from Greek translation. Hallelujah. Um, I just uh, always like to start life lightheartedly. We're talking about the awesome gift uh, that our Father longed to give us. And the Bible actually says it was the, uh, the promise of the Father. Uh, to us, the gift of the Father. So um, here it goes. Um, have you, uh, a mother appealed to her children uh, to care for orphaned children. She says, these poor children don't have a mother, a father. They don't even have aunts or uncles. Would you children like to give them anything? The children discussed this among themselves and then announce their decision. Mom, let's give them Aunt Martha. <laughs> um, Dad suggested that the family get him a gift, uh, that the whole family could actually get something out of. So they did. They bought Dad a new wallet. Um, and just the last, uh, because I want to share something wonderful with you. Have you heard the rumor going around about butter? Never mind, I shouldn't really spread it. Um, so I want to spread the good news uh, today and encourage you and build you up. Um, what, what, when I prayed, I just, um, just want to, uh, brothers and sisters, I just feel so... Ooh, um, like I'm on, um, uh, you know, energy, drink. <laughs> energy. Yeah, I'm on, like I'm on energy drink. I just feel God is so um, ready. Uh, you, you know, in in the last 20th century, we had mighty, mighty moves of God. And the 20th century started with outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it was a very famous outpouring in Azusa Street, uh, and and it impacted the whole world. A new move of God started, you know, uh, uh, Holy Spirit move. It, it was uh, Assemblies of God move, Pentecostal move. Then there was healing move. Then there was uh, uh, charismatic move of God uh, and so on. But now God wants to do a glory move. And, and God promised it uh, in, in so many scriptures that he wants uh, the day is coming when the whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. And and it is going to be so mighty and powerful. And I felt God saying that he needs and he longs for every believer uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, because it's not going to be, you know, work, my work or your work out of our effort, out of our flesh, out of our, you know, trying to fulfill great commission. No, it's going to be a work of God, a move of God through each of us. And we can, uh, we can only do it totally leaning on him. Or, you know, when we, when we rely on him, he will use us in a mighty way. He will flow through us. And he needs each of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I just, um, you know, Moses back in the Old Testament, when uh, he was basically, he was done. He, was, he said to God, Lord, you know, these people demand so much. If this is how you treat me, he says to him in, uh, in Numbers 11, just kill me. <laughs> uh, and, and God said to him, you know what? I'll take this uh, of the spirit that is on you and I'll pour out on them. So choose 70 elders. So they did. And the Holy Spirit came on uh, 72 elders. And, and there was 70 elders who came to the tabernacle and two stayed in a camp. And Joshua saw those two. And, and when the Holy Spirit came on them, they all started prophesying. And Joshua ran to Moses and said, Moses, my Lord, this, those two are in the camp. They're prophesying. And Moses says to him, it's in Numbers eleven twenty nine. Want to read it? Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Yeah, so this is Father's desire. He said, I wish that all 
Lord's people uh, were prophets. And the, the Lord put his spirit on all of them. You know, Jesus said in uh, Luke uh, 12, 49. I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. Yeah, so he, he, he's, the, Jesus says, I came to bring fire. And you remember he said when, uh, you know, when he's the one who will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. With the Holy Spirit and fire. Uh, so he's, and Jesus says, I came to bring, to cast the fire on earth. And how I long that it's already kindled, that it's already started. I so much want for each God's people to prophesy and be filled with the spirit. And remember, he, he says to the disciples in, um, he said uh, in Acts 1, 4, actually it's on the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. You can read it for me, Abby, please. Yeah. Um, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Yeah, so he said, uh, yeah, awesome, Kevin, thank you. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come on you. Don't do anything. Don't go anywhere. You know, wait on the Holy Spirit. Receive this this power from on high and actually jesus says in john 16 7 he says it is much better for you if i go away i mean none of us would ever think you know having jesus right next to us in the flesh how amazing would that be isn't it and yet jesus says it is to your advantage if i go because if i don't go holy spirit won't come uh, and and the transformation did you notice we uh, what you what Edith was reading, how the you have these guys who, after the death of Jesus, they're hiding. Uh, it says, for fear of Jews, uh, doors are closed. You know, now Holy Spirit comes with a, a mighty Russian wind sound, right? And they are so boldly speaking. They are proclaiming, they're declaring, they actually say to them, you crucified him. You crucified Jesus. You rejected the Lord of glory and the Lord of life. And you chose Barabbas. You know, and then they, it says they were cut to the heart. And the brothers, what shall we do? And 3,000 become Christians. Uh, right? So, uh, and this is, you see absolute change. When they were, before they were running, then it actually says, Peter boldly with John stand and says to those elders, say, Listen, consider among yourselves, is it, is it right, more right in the eyes of God to obey you or God? <laughs> and says, we're never going to stop talking about this. <laughs> and, uh, and they've been threatened, all right? Um, so I, I just uh, want to stir your passion because Holy Spirit is represented in the, in the New Testament as the river of God. Jesus, Jesus says uh, in John 4, when he talks to, so though Holy Spirit is, is so amazing, I mean, Holy Spirit re represented as a fire uh, in, in, in the Bible, and also he is represented as the rivers, you know, as the water. So it's like, uh, he is also wind, <laughs> you know, that I guess yeah. stirs up fire, it's everything, you know, that... Uh, uh, I mean, just river brings life, isn't it? Wherever river flows, uh, in, in Ezekiel, it actually says, wherever that river flows, it will bring life. And that river flows from, the, uh, from beneath the temple. Each of you, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, have been made into the temple of the living God. Uh, because God himself came to live inside of you. But now he comes to live inside of you, you know, and now he, Jesus says, those who believe in me, in John 7, he says, those who believe in me, as the scripture says, from within their bellies, rivers of living water will flow. And, and it says, thus he spoke of the Holy Spirit, who they would receive, who believe in him. And in, in the same, uh, you know, illustration, Ezekiel 47 actually says that that river flowed uh, and it, wherever it went, wherever it was death, it turned into life. All the marshes were turned into, you know, lush, and there were uh, pastures, and there was, uh, you know, uh, fruitful trees on every side. Actually, awesome. If you could read Isaiah 28. Mm -hmm. 
11 to 12. Yes, please. Yeah. Since they won't listen to me. Oh, sorry, oh. sorry. It's uh, 32. Oh, okay. 32. <laughs> For the bustling city with its mansions will be deserted. The high ground. 32. It's yeah. not 33. 32. It's not. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead. 32. It's different translation. Sorry. 32 to. Uh, yeah. For the bustling city with its mansions will be deserted. The high ground and watchtower will be empty, becoming the joy of wild donkeys and a grazing ground for flocks. So desolation will not end until the until. spirit is poured out upon us from heaven. Keep reading. Then the wilderness will blossom into a fruitful orchard and the trees of the orchard will grow into a forest. Then justice will reside in the wilderness and righteousness will dwell in the fruitful orchard. So there's destruction, Isaiah describes. There's like ruin. There's, uh, you know, desolation until the spirit is poured out uh, on us from on high and then this wilderness will turn into lush, lush pastures and lush, lush pastures will turn into orchards amen and then the righteousness will reign and this is what God so longs to pour out through you and me brothers and sisters you know because uh, we um, as uh, just just um, to give you a few illustrations from the uh, old testament so we let's go to the next uh, kevin uh, powerpoint um what happens to these believers you see they come they start speaking in other tongues right and people hear about wonderful acts of god and they turn to jesus it's it's antidote to babel tower of babel if you remember it says in Genesis 11, 5, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men have built, right? And what did he do? He disabled them, right? So he, he came down and he disabled. O on the Pentecost, he came down and he enabled them, mm -hmm. amen? Yeah. He equipped them. Mm -hmm. So in, in ba Babel, he confused them and separated them. He disabled them. Here... He comes down and he empowers and sends them out. He enables them, amen, to spread the good news. Before they were building a name for themselves, they were doing something, uh, right, in rebellion towards God. Now God empowers and almost uh, gives them other tongues to reach the nations. And they're trying to reach God there, but the Holy Spirit is God coming and reaching them inside. Mm. Of the men. Nice. I like that. Thank you, Abby. Um, so, in um, uh, back to sort of illustration of the Pentecost in uh, in in our Bible, when uh, Jewish people celebrate Shavuot today, which is uh, the giving of the law, uh, what happened? If you remember, the Jews uh, in Egypt still, and God uh, gives them uh, a command: take, take the lambs, uh, you know, sacrifice a lamb, uh, you know, you will roast this lamb, take its blood and put on a doorpost, uh, and uh, the death will pass over, right? The angel of death will pass over. And then they left Egypt, which the New Testament describes to us, or everything that happens happened to them, it happened to us by illustration, right? Uh, so they left, spirit. We, we left spiritual Egypt because the blood of Jesus was applied to us, and, and now death has no power over us, mm -hmm. amen? If, if you receive the sacrifice of Jesus, death has no power over you anymore. Mm -hmm. Jesus actually says, whoever believes in me shall never, ever, ever, ever die. Uh, the the Hebrew, Greek word there is absolute impossibility. Uh, whoever believes in me shall never, ever die, amen? So uh, it, it, his, his blood was applied to us. They walked through the... Uh, Red Sea, which Bible tells us in First Corinthians, they were baptized into Moses, right? So they walked through the Red Sea, and where did they get? They came into wilderness, right? And and uh, 50 days after the Passover, they were given the law, uh, Shavuot, okay? When, if you remember, God comes down onto the mountain uh, in a smoke and, and fire, and uh, the comparison, again, with the New Testament is so powerful. Uh, 
was on our Pentecost, Holy Spirit comes down, right? Uh, in On the biblical Pentecost, Shavuot, God came down on a mountain and look what happened. There was thunder and lightning. There was fire and smoke. Yeah. Now, Holy Spirit comes, there's wind and fire. Okay. There was a sound in the Old Testament. There was loud sound of ram's horn. In the New Testament, we have sound of a mighty rushing wind. Yeah. The, there were boundaries built around the mountain in the Old Testament. And God said, do not make sure no one comes close. Mm. No one must come close. If anyone comes close, they will die. Mm. All right. What happens in the New Testament? Holy Spirit comes down and everyone rushes to hear and to see what happened. Mm. Amen. Every, can you see comparison? Mm. In, the, in the Old Testament, Moses is standing trembling. Uh, because of all of this display, book of Hebrews says he was in uh, fear and awe of what was happening. You know, now we come, it says we come boldly. Uh, what happened? They received 10 commandments. And as a result, they built golden calf and 3000 people died. Right. Uh, disciples received the Holy Spirit and 3000 people come alive. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, so it's also the God speaks only to Moses. He goes on the mountain and, and God speaks only to Moses in the, in the new Testament says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh mm -hmm. and all my sons and daughters will see dreams and prophesy and, and have visions. Amen. It's, um, comparison just goes, go, I, I, I love it. It's, um, Notice the um, can can uh, Kevin could you show that um, uh, PowerPoint with, uh, as a you will see guys as a comparison in Shavuot yeah Passover replaced by by obviously Jesus shed his blood for us died on the cross then uh, they celebrate in the giving of the law which is the Shavuot the Pentecost here we celebrate in the receiving of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, interesting. It, it, this is really powerful. Uh, and also, yeah, there we, we have the veil in the Holy of Holies was put up, but for us, it was to torn down. And now we have individual Holy of Holies. God himself comes to live inside of us. Amen. Um, thank you, Kevin. That's great. Um, in the, just... <sighs> As a as an encouragement and, and, and a stirring for all of us, what Matthew was saying in the beginning, that each and every day, uh, like New Testament says to us, be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the picture of this, look, uh, they came through the Red Sea. They w w came into wilderness and they were stuck there until all of them died. And they, didn't ne they did not inherit the uh, promised land until the Israelites walked through another body of water, which was what? Jordan River, right? And Jordan River actually represents baptism in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So they were saved and stuck in the wilderness. And how many of you feel that? You're saved and you're stuck. You know, you don't see any fruit in your life. You don't see any change. You know, you struggle with the same things as you struggled in Egypt before, right? Uh, because you need to cross another body of water. The Holy Spirit who wants to enable you. And then he enables you to fight, to get, uh, to claim the promises that Jesus paid for. Amen. With his blood to, to, for you to enjoy and for you to enable other people to receive them. Amen. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, Jesus says, in, in John 4, when you receive him, it becomes the water he says I give to you will become a well inside of you springing to eternal life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you don't thirst ever um, mm -hmm. again. You have well uh, mm -hmm. always springing to eternal life when you receive Jesus. But then that's that was John 4. But in John 7, he talks about once you receive 
me as you believe I want to pour out my spirit and rivers will flow. Listen, and God, God says to each of us, the well can never accomplish what river can. You know, it's like you're saved and you're stuck. You got enough water for yourself to satisfy your eternal thirst, but you are not used to anyone else. You know, you... And you maybe you're trying to do it in your own flesh, you know, like Israelites said to God before he gave them law, we can do it. Everything God said, we can do it. So he said, okay, here's the law. And what happened? They found that they just instantly break the first commandment and create golden calf and fall into idolatry, right? None of us can fulfill the law. So this is why he gives us Holy Spirit, because he's the one who starts living from the inside of us. It's not, I'm not just now saved and stuck. He enables me to live this out. He enables me to now that well to spread out as a river to people all out, uh, around. It's like you cannot fulfill the great commission in your own strength. Every day be filled with the spirit. This is a, guys, this is a priority. Amen. Every day be filled with the Spirit so you don't do anything out of your flesh. You know, we delight relying on our flesh. We will like, you know, people actually praise others. Uh, you know, well done, you do it. You know, we kind of think, what will be the cause? I need to do this for God, you know? No, God doesn't need you to do anything for Him. He wants to do through you. He wants to do together. He wants to anoint you. He wants to flow through you. And your submission, and when you receive his Holy Spirit and he flows through you, uh, one, I think Toza said, the only thing that pleases God is what God does himself. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do in our flesh, it's like it says in the book of Corinthians, it just becomes uh, mm -hmm. built with hay, wooden, and, and straw, you know? Mm -hmm. But he wants to flow through you and build with gold, silver, and precious wow. stones. Amen. So let's just, uh, just quickly, one more um, PowerPoint, um, ne next one. Uh, look how, Abby, could you read it for me? Sure. Christ paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. Jesus was cursed in our place and in so doing dissolved the curse from our lives so that all the blessings of Abraham can be poured out upon even non-Jewish believers. And now God gives us the promise of the wonderful Holy Spirit who lives within us when we believe in him. And I, I just notice how this is almost, again, a comparison. Old Testament Shavuot, when they relied on their own flesh, they said, mm -hmm. we will do everything God said. Mm -hmm. So he gives them law, and what happens? Curse comes. Now, when you depend on the Holy Spirit, and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and he flows through you, it says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen? Mm -hmm. By becoming cursed for us. So now you can receive the promise of the Holy Spirit and become his collaborator, amen? You become, you know, he promised to Abraham, I, through you, I will bless all the nations. Mm -hmm. How is that possible if it's not by God, amen? If it's not by his work, amen? But you are part of it. You, you submit, you receive, mm -hmm. and he flows through you. Let's go to next one, Kevin. I just, another illustration how i want to stir up guys your zeal and like you need holy spirit you need to receive this fire uh abby could you mm -hmm. read you shall command the israelites to provide you with pure oil of crushed olives for the light to cause it to burn continually in the tent of meeting outside the veil which sets apart the testimony aaron and his sons shall keep it burning from evening to morning before the lord Awesome. That was from that was from uh, numbers, I believe. Um, and and he so notice as as in the holy of holies you have fire. That's when you you are saved. It says uh, in in uh, by the Holy Spirit coming to live inside of you. Yeah, you regenerated by the Holy Spirit by the Word of God. Okay, so you receive the life of God inside of your heart. But now, you know, no one else, no, no one can, no one could see that from the outside. Mm. You know, the tabernacle, Kevin, thank you. Uh, in, in a tabernacle is a closed space. No one could see outside. There's a light inside, but no one can see it outside, right? But he's, 
set himself as a pillar of fire on top of it that everyone can see. Amen. And this is exactly when he comes to live inside of you, you become his holy of holies. You become his temple. You become temple of the living God. But now he wants that light out. Amen. It was like Abby quoted that scripture. The love of God has been shed abroad into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now into in your heart, you have the love of God. But now he wants out. He wants that love of God be spread ev everywhere around, around all the people. Amen. Um, sorry. Um, so awesome. Um, just just um, Kevin, let's go to the next one. Um, just so that uh, guys, when we pray and you obviously, I, 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 I really believe that you will hunger today like uh, jesus said uh, that the father will give the holy spirit to those who ask him you know he said you can give good gifts to your children you being evil but how much more the father will give holy spirit to those who ask him mm -hmm. and how he longs to give you yeah. amen and when you pray sometimes obviously you know we, we see here disciples were praying in other languages but God gives you individual, your personal language. Like in the book of Revelation, it says he will give you your individual name. No one else will know, only God and you, you know, because he knows you so deeply, so intimately. You will have a special, lovely word, like he will call you by special name, you know. And the same way, He, a father in heaven gives you your individual language mm -hmm. by apostle paul says we pray mysteries to god no one else understands only god no angels understand it mm -hmm. no one else only god when you speak in this uh, uh, tongues it says we speak of tongue in tongues of men or angels so uh, like disciple you, you know in a, in a babel they spoke in a known languages but they were divided right here god gives tons of men so people can understand but also tons of angels that no one else only you and the father in heaven understand mm -hmm. amen L let's go to next one kevin um so abby could you read it sure i give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as i have loved you so you should love one another yeah so like the ten commandments in a sense replaced by this awesome jesus says i will give you a new commandment love one another how just as i have loved so mm -hmm. it's the baptism of the holy spirit enables you to fulfill this commandment amen only he through you can love people mm -hmm. with his unconditional love amen and only he what is if if person needs healing what is the true love would do the true love would meet that need right you can't do it in your own flesh but he said it's the power of the holy spirit that would heal the sick amen Jesus didn't do, uh, Kevin, thank you. Uh, Jesus didn't do any miracles until he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't do any signs and wonders until Holy Spirit came on him. And that's exactly what he wants for you and me, brothers and sisters. He wants to flow now through you and me. He wants to love people through you and me. If there's sickness, he wants to heal that through you. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. If there's pain, he wants to uh, heal that if there's a need he wants to meet is a, if there's a confusion he wants to give wisdom mm -hmm. you know and all the gifts all the gifts of the holy spirit they just to be honest they just represent jesus amen they just this is god's desire always was this is last powerpoint last picture god's mm -hmm. plan always was jesus multiplied mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all the believers receive the power of the Holy Spirit. All these gifts, they only represent Jesus. And it's like you become, you know, you already have uh, your one spirit with the Lord when you receive God in your spirit. One spirit with the Lord, right? But now on the outside, he wants you, like you become Jesus to people around. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's God's plan. Mm -hmm. Um Hallelujah. Lord, we, uh, I, I just pray for our family, for brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you that you give us the river of life, the river of the Holy Spirit, that you want to totally immerse us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. In river is unstoppable, mm -hmm. Lord. When you flow through us, it's, it's not just a well that can be clogged. It's a river 
that uh, removes all obstacles. And Father, we pray that you, I pray that you would fill us up, fill us up with the Holy Spirit. We hunger, we thirst, we desire. Ask him, ask us the Father to give you Holy Spirit. Amen. And as uh, Abby reminded me, when Holy Spirit fell down in the house of Cornelius, you know, when Peter was speaking there, and it says Holy Spirit fell on all of them. There's a, a, a Greek word there. It's epipipto. It actually says the love hug. You know, Holy Spirit couldn't wait. He just fell on them and gave them a love hug. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and this is what God wants to do with each of you. He wants to give you by the Holy Spirit a love hug. Want to put himself all around you so that mm -hmm. he can spread Jesus through you everywhere. Mm -hmm. Father, with thirst. Mm -hmm. Father, with hunger. And so we, you know, we, when you pray, just don't focus on, uh, don't try to like put, oh, I need to deserve this. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Just ask and by faith receive. The Father wants to give you gift. None of this is deserved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, praise you. Praise you for the Pentecost. Praise you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise you that you rushed to come to your people. You rushed, hallelujah, to come on us. And he so desires to fall on you. He so desires to flow through each and every one of us. Hallelujah.